Hello. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Julie's Wine of the Week on Spirited Convos. How's everybody doing? Uh, it's been a, already a week. It goes by so fast. I didn't do a song today. I thought I would shake it up a little bit. Um, we have great show for you uh, tonight. And I, uh, you know, just wanted to find out how everybody's mother uh, Mother's Day was. So if you're in the audience, shoot me a little hello, say hi. Um, and I would like to dedicate this episode. I see you, Jenny Warp. Happy Mother's Day. Um, I would like to dedicate this episode to my mother. Um, you know, she's, she's quite amazing. And I almost didn't do the show tonight because uh, just lots of other things going on. And she said, you can't, you can't miss it. No, you have to do the show. And then she called me a couple days later and she said, what about wine tools, tools of the trade? Don't you have tools of the trade? And um, sure enough, I have a ton. So uh, this show is going to be about Max's Cabernet and also um, tools of the trade. So, hey, Brian Vaughn, thank you for saying my mom rocks. She'll she'll be on in a second, I'm sure. Um, so also tonight we have a very special show, some very special guests. And I would like to introduce my first guest, a friend I grew up with in the neighborhood here in Chicago. Um, We've done a lot of really cool stuff together. And hi, Christine. Uh, and so tonight I would like to welcome my friend, my colleague, my partner in crime and video, uh, Brian Schnorr. Brian Schnorr, welcome to the show. Hi, Julie. Thanks for having me. Hey, of course. You know, uh, I've been on your show. You're on my show. We started Spirited Convos together in 2012. Um, so... Can you believe that long ago? No, I was going through so many old videos and it's hard to believe it's been that long. I know. I look a lot younger, um, thinner, in better shape. <laughs> <laughs> well, just to give the audience a little background on Brian. Um, yes, we did grow up together. Uh, and then a bunch of years ago, we had this idea. Actually, my friend Valia Dudich pushed, pushed it. And I was like, oh, I let's do a show. And so we started with the first episode and I, I was like, I need some help. Who can I, who can I reach out to that knows what they're doing in TV and video? And I thought of Brian, because we'd worked together on a couple things before. We found love in a homeless place. Go to YouTube, check it out. Um, <laughs> and started working together, doing silly videos. Um, and now, because of this COVID lockdown, everybody's doing different stuff. A lot of people are laid off. You're laid off right now from your regular job, right? Yeah. Yeah. Both. I uh, work those live sporting events. There are none. And, uh, you know, when I was off of that, I would substitute teach and there's no school. So, yeah, I went from working all the time to screeching halt. Nothing. Yeah. yeah. Right. Exactly. Until now. I, you know, we're doing live, live shows and you have one that I watch every night at 10 PM. A lot of people out there are starting to catch on, uh, called Rev Schnorr. Uh, and I'm not sure how much detail you want to go in on that, but well, it was uh, about the show. A character, <clears throat> excuse me, a character I created when I was studying improv at the second city conservatory. I mean, we created thousands of characters, you know, every day you did multiple ones just kind of creating as you improvised and i had a day job at the jerry springer show and crazy job i would my job was to write <laughs> and produce the commercials to tell you what's going to be on tomorrow and one day uh they're ready to go they're going to have a wedding on the show and they would drive in a minister from milwaukee in a limousine and he got stuck in traffic on the edens and couldn't get there in time. So Jerry's ready. The studio's full. The guests are ready. The audience is there. They don't have a minister. So I get a phone call from the boss who says, grab one of Jerry's old Armani suits, run out there, and you'll be the, the minister for the wedding. So uh, I did that, and it was horrible. <laughs> I thought, well, how, what would a minister be like? Like a fish out of water, Jerry Springer, wide-eyed and naive and innocent. And it wasn't funny at all. 
So uh, the boss yelled at me. <laughs> said, I, I put you out there for that. I can't get anyone to do that. <laughs> and uh, the, the stage manager says, bro, you're going to go down, go down in flames. So Jerry handed me the mic without me knowing and said, you know, without any advance warning, he said, preach to the audience. So I brought out this character I'd done at Second City and just kind of went through and, and like I had been drinking a little too much and yelled at everybody. And it's a very irreverent character. He's a womanizer. He's a greedy, not anything that a man out of cloth should be. And that's where the humor kind of comes from. Well, it's hilarious. Thanks. I hope I didn't ramble on too long. No, no, you're fine. Look at that picture of you. That looks nothing like you. No, no. Uh, well, <laughs> When I was doing it on TV, my hair was really that long. But no. then when I wasn't on the show anymore, I, it would drive me nuts, blown in my face, so I cut it. And then I realized, well, if I ever want to do that again. So I went to Fantasy Headquarters and bought a wig. But the rest of me has grayed and aged, and the wig obviously hasn't. So it, it doesn't look quite as natural anymore. So I've foregone that. And since the virus, I can't get my hair cut anyhow, so... I just right. kind of do this and it, it might just look like that crazy. soon enough. Right. <laughs> oh, well, that's great. So everybody tune in tonight at 10, actually every night at 10 PM um, for the Rev Schnorr TV network. It's hilarious um, and recommend it to your friends. Definitely a different show than this one for sure. Alcohol is consumed. Um, and I've been on your show and now you've been on mine and I, I, also would like to talk about your your partner that you work with on Rev Schnorr, who is also my partner, but none of my audience has actually seen the man. He's like, he's like the Wizard of Oz, the man behind the curtain. And I thought tonight would be a great opportunity for the world to see how this show actually happened. So I want to do the big reveal and uh, welcome Carl Limo onto the show officially. <laughs> 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 well, sure. He wears pants for your show. Oh, come on there, Rev. <laughs> Julie, how are you? Carl, I am good. I'm good. It's so good to see all of you. Um, I know. I'm just sitting. Usually I don't have to get dressed for your show. I just stay in the background and, you know, just work from behind the curtain. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. That's right. We just ripped that curtain away. So and all you people out there, when randomly you'll hear me say, hey, Carl, can you throw that map back up? Uh this is Carl Alimo, currently also laid off um, because of your TV and uh, videography skills. Usually I'm gone, right, Rev? About 29 days a, a month. Sometimes I'm gone more than I'm home, and this is the longest I think I've been home since uh, probably 2002. Especially this time of year because you do the hockey playoffs. So it's not unusual to not hear from Carl from you know the end of April till early June. Usually he's, he's gone. From, from tax day till June 16th, I'm barely home. And then this year I was supposed to be in Tokyo for the Olympics. So I would have been gone another month. So uh, I'm cutting the grass a lot, three times a week. Everybody wants yeah. to hear me, but oh well. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually your grass looks great. And uh, oh, wait, you know, really? I, real yeah. quick, tell all your viewers today and from now on, hopefully knock on wood. Uh, you're streaming live on YouTube today. Too. I'm streaming live on YouTube, audience. So if you don't have Facebook, you can certainly uh, watch YouTube, which is great. So thank you. Uh, thanks, Carl, for that. And uh, and also don't forget to share the um, hit the share button on the show today. We want to reach as many people as possible. So, yeah, thanks for that. I know Brian uh, helped uh, set that up many years ago. So, you know, it's like teaching old dogs new tricks. And here we are. And I will go back to your beautiful grass because for Mother's Day, um, the last show, Christy. Well, I got mine on too. Oh, you've got your jewelry. Oh, I was supposed version. to put mine on and I forgot. Oh, come Aww. on. I've got a great one too. It's beautiful. Oh, well, so for Mother's Day, Christine, Carl's wife gave me this bracelet that she made from Nick and Bella. And I went over there to buy. Um, some Mother's Day gifts for the ladies in my life. And um, we're, you know, social distancing, of course. Always. And as we're Probably <laughs> more. Probably more. We were farther apart than that. We were very far apart. And, you know, we're, you know, six at least feet apart. And 
I'm looking and I see something moving on Carl's fence. And I'm like, what the heck is that? And we had a guest, another mother coming over to the Alimo house to buy her Nick and Bella bracelets. All along comes this huge raccoon. You know what? You know what the best is about that story? I was telling people that this poor little thing is coming out during the day and everybody's telling me it's probably sick, right? Because it's out during the day or it's looking for uh, food for its family. But they usually don't come out at one o'clock in the afternoon. And Julie's the one that saw it. And I know that they come out during the day, too, because I had a raccoon issue at my apartment on Windsor many years ago. And so Carl was like, yeah, I'm not crazy. Here's the video. <laughs> I, I taught this. He's Look at that thing. Hang out at the I'm surprised alarm. you didn't actually shoot it. I'm not sure it's going to happen. Julie is the hunter. Uh, <laughs> come a little closer. You're going to get your butt whooped. You're going to get your butt whooped. Yeah, take it out. Oh. I mean, he, she was just like, I don't care. What's up? What are you guys doing in the backyard? Can I come over? So that night, I actually called a friend who uh, actually has some uh, a place in Wisconsin, and they have cages and stuff for, for the animals that get too close to the house or make themselves welcome. So I called them up. I got the cage. I said, now it's out during the day, and I have a dog. Neighbors have a dog. So we, I set the trap where I think it should be, and I call my neighbor, and I say, you could see from across the street. So if something's in the trap, call us, and I'll come get it. No more than 30 seconds, he calls back, and he says, there's no need to look for the raccoon. It's in my backyard, <laughs> in, in their kid's play set. So I take the trap across the street. We set it in the play set. And literally three, four times he went in there or she, I don't know how to check, uh, goes in, gets the, gets the food I left, steps over, steps over the trap line that closes the cage and takes it out. So we set it three, four times about finally, like the fifth time we caught him, her, it, and, uh, we let go of it humanely. So, well, that's good to know. Time. You do know they will find their way back to your house. They have like, you know, a honing device it's in their house. Far, far away. <laughs> you have um, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, people tuning in here tonight. You want to see? I some see. Here? I see. We've got uh, name with the word Larson here, so I'm guessing they're related. That's my big brother Mike and his wife Freddie and family. My brother Steve and his wife Karen. Laura, she's in the neighborhood. I see Jeff Anderson. Oh, I have so much stuff on on my desk here that I'm knocking stuff down. Um, Gina oh, there's Pizano. my wife. She's watching. She's probably having some wine upstairs. Christine. Yes. Great. Well, oh. thank you so much for everybody joining. I see Brooke too. Just got off a big wine training. So uh, Laura's got a possum problem. Oh, Laura. Oh my. Laura, you got to awesome. take care of that because when I was younger at my parents' house, there was a possum family underneath an above ground pool that they didn't know they had. And one day, my neighbors at my mom's house, we woke up to the whole street flooded, and their <laughs> den had all of the above-ground pool flooded in their den and their basement because they chewed, thinking they were chewing through to make another den, and they went through the liner in the metal of the pool, and it flooded the whole – it destroyed the whole backyard wow. and the basement in the house. So you got to take care of that thing. I hope you don't have a pool, Laura. Um, if not, take care of that. <laughs> oh, wait. Mom, too. Mom's in the house. Welcome, Mom. This is the I got show for you. Mom, I don't know what they do. I'm not a wine drinker, but I'm learning every week from Julie. Well, guess what? It was her idea for this show to do tools of the trade. So I have, uh, I mean, I literally opened up my drawers and I pulled out everything wine related that I have accumulated over the years. And uh, so thanks for that idea, Mom. And my niece, Michaela's in the house. Hi, Mick. So yeah, um, Tonight, we're going to be talking about the Penfolds Max's Cabernet. Uh, Brian, I think you have a bottle, too. I do. And if you'll notice, two different labels, right? Same wine. Too bright. This one, we, it's a sleeve. Yeah. Um, and Brian's is the fancy label, you know. Um, but, yeah, pretty cool. So I'm going to just go through, um, you know, unwrapping a bottle, opening it, you know, 
multiple, multiple things. Well, this pen folds maxes has this sleeve. Um, so kind of actually comes off like a gift, like a gift wrap. So check that out. And underneath is the same label that Brian has. So it's very festive and very fun and different. So you can, you can, you know, choose what you like. So kind of neat. And then of course, um, starting with the very first thing, uh, taking the label off. Oh yes, you both have wine keys. Let's see what you got. Carl's got a pen folds. Brian's got the old school wings. Yep. <laughs> well, all these tools are used for something? Oh, they're what? All these tools are actually used for something? Actually, they are. So the one, the blade you're pulling out it's right sharp. now, it's sharp. Don't cut yourself. Right. Um, so, yeah, you're going to take that knife and you're going to cut around the foil, right? Or uh, if you have one of these, this is also a foil cutter. I had one of those and it broke. I so I have one. I, I'll send one to you. Ah, Brooke, love a good gift wrapping. <laughs> so I'm going to use the old, this new fangled one. So basically you just put it over the top and you squeeze. Let's see if I can't do it. And it cuts the foil for you. So very simply like that. If you're using a blade, um, which... I'm more used to, and when you're out there, it's fast because you have everything in one place, right? You've got your blade to cut and you have also your corkscrew. So um, I prefer the double hinge wine opener. Um, see these hinges right here? It gives you just extra leverage, although there are ones out there that don't have the double hinge like this one. See, it's one hinge, solid. Um, so it's just your preference, right? So then, not only do we have all these different types of openers, um, before we actually, and Brian, you can start to open your wine. You're gonna put the I did screw. That. Okay. You, you see that screw? Yep, you wanna point it. that right down into the middle of the cork, grab the bottle, and you're gonna go in that way. Screw down, all the way down, yep. Oh, that's right, I forgot you have the wings. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. And then there, stop, and you're gonna press down those wings and it's gonna pull the cork right out. There you go. And then you can either pull it, yep, just like that. So nice. I found that if otherwise I go all the way through the cork, I can't recork it. No. On the rare occasion, I don't finish a whole bottle. <sighs> wow. Right? Then, if you don't, you also, there are things like these that you have always in your house that are just corks that you can pop right in there. If you, you know, you ruin your cork, then go into your, uh, you know, your silverware drawer and grab one of these. Um, I have plenty. I have this one. This is from my cousin Jenny. It was her grandfather's. Um, I have the holiday cork, oh, you know. Oh, cute. Right? I like that, yeah. Yeah, there's all kinds of uh, options out there um, that are pretty cool. Oh, look at you have them. There you That's go. Good. Nicely done. Wow. I can go right through that cork then. I mean, right? So you can go ahead and, and you've got yours open. You can pour your wine. But I'm going to talk a little bit about before we open the wine. If you have bottles of wine that are, you know, uh, collectors or very expensive and you don't, you, you know, maybe you don't want to open the whole bottle. Um, this heart surgeon actually invented a Coravin. So this is what it looks like. A, a true heart surgeon came up with this? Yeah, he did. He came up with it because um, he had a nice collection of wine and he didn't necessarily want to, you know, he wanted to try it. And, and he thought there's got to be a way to taste these wines without opening the bottle. Um, some people have collections they lay down for, you know, decades um, or inherit. So um, basically what it is, is there's a gas, uh, there's a little gas a uh, tube in here, butane and, um, or another uh, gas. And then basically here you can see is a, um, it's like a needle and it has a little hole in it. It's hollow, just like the ones they use in heart surgery. And um, 
So basically, I'm going to show you how to do this. I'm going to pour myself a glass of wine with this Coravin, and then, of course, I'm going to open the whole bottle later. But well, um, We're seeing this live right now. This is like open-heart surgery. <laughs> Without the, uh, the long education and the paycheck. So um, basically, you press the needle into the cork, right, all the way down. And then uh, you get your glass. So here's my spirited combos glass. So that looked pretty easy. Is that because it's it's gas triggered? So not yet. So okay. the gas trigger part happens here. So you're going to press this and it's going to release the wine. So you press it and then there it comes right out. Right. Oh, it's cool. Yeah. And so, you know, you can pour as much or as little as you want um, in there. And then when you're done, so you just want to pull it right out. And, you know, it just, it's a little bit like that. And you want to be careful not to, you know, there's a little safety on here so you don't. Um, so what's the top of the wine bottle look like now? So the top of the wine bottle just has oh. a little prick in it. Do you see that? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. So the cork seals itself almost. And there you go. So if today Brian, we got to get one of those, yeah, for a couple hundred dollars. I mean, they do start me. paying me, Brian, and our show and all the money we make, we could get one of those. Yeah, <laughs> save it up. We'll have to share it. <laughs> hey, we'll just hand it across the screen. There yeah, you hand it across the screen. There you go. Oh, so that's the Coravin. So cheers. Um, I'm gonna have a sip of this because I'm so thirsty. I'm uh, drinking yeah. Lacroix and a little vodka today. Oh, Lord. Cheers. Don't even talk to me about vodka right now. Thank you, Michaela. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Everybody out there, have your bottle of wine. Open it up. Um, pour yourself a glass. So what we say in the Rev Show is send us an emoji with a bottle of beer or a glass of wine, and that means you're cheering to us. Oh, yeah. I see my brother, Steve, um, sent some morels home uh, for me today. There we so. go. Yeah, I'm gonna make some some food with that later. Not today. What's course. this here? Is this an inside joke here coming to you? <gasps> That's my uncle George, all the way from California. Uncle there George, you. them all. That's at the that's at the ten o'clock show. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Gina says that's kind of like the jaws of life. <laughs> that must be the uh, wine opener. Let's see. This one. Yes. Yeah. Then there, there you go. Oh, there's some people drinking. Oh, there's Gina Pisano. Yeah. So I found all these things in my, I found this, this wine opener, which is a, you know, probably cheapo thing that you could put in your purse for when you're on a picnic. Oh, hang on. Let me get you. There you go. There you go. So you, you know, it's like I, all in one. This is so difficult though. You know, I think I've taken that from a hotel once or twice. I was going to say, I had one in my car for when I go to hotels. Yeah. I don't steal the lotion. I steal the wine openers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I, so speaking of wine openers, so there's, there's plenty of options. That one I'm not going to do because it would be horrible live. Um, it's like struggling, you know. Uh, this one I actually got in Burgundy, France with my, oh. one of my best friends, Kathy Kozak and I were in the Rue de la Grand Cru. And this is actually, um, uh, an old, uh, you know, vine um, rootstock. So that's a challenge. It's more for a show. But then we have these newfangled ones that scare me a little bit. And normally I, you know, use the wine key. So let's see if this works. I got this as a gift um, and it does everything for you. So you just put it on top of the bottle. That's the kiss crossed. of death. That's the kiss of death. Here we go. This is <laughs> this is called the rabbit. <laughs> uh, and then. Ah! They scare me. I don't know what's going on in there. Yeah. But, but, but now I'm pushing it right back out. So where's the, where's the romance? Where's the romance in that? Oh, if, that's short lived. I know. If yeah. you have 25 bottles of wine to open, I suppose this would be the way to go. Maybe if you drew a little face on it, maybe a little wig so it looked prettier. 
Like a robot, like Rosie the robot opening it up. What's that called again? It's called the rabbit, rabbit. And rabbit has a few different types of wine oh, there you openers. Go. Yeah, they have, you know, the one that also looks like a rabbit. It does look like the Jaws of Life, Gina Pisano. Laura so, loves the rabbit. Yeah. So it just depends on what you're looking for. Laura does love the rabbit. Um, Chaz says, martinis are like boobs. One is not enough. Two is just right. And three makes you go to bed at 9 p.m. Okay. I guess we have to talk about this. So last night I I had made myself a martini. My niece gave me uh, an infusion pomegranate hibiscus. Is she watching today? She is. She's on. What's her uh, name? Michaela Larson. Okay. And I had one. I poured a little LaCroix in it. I thought, you know, I'll have a martini. Well, it went down quick and it was like juice. And so I poured another one. Well, apparently... Um, Three martinis is not like three glasses of wine. And <laughs> it's a little bit more intense. Yeah. So it's like a hurricane. One is good. Two is your limit for sure. So anyway, thanks, Michaela, for that Christmas gift. <laughs> this is getting put to use, right? I know, right? <laughs> oh, my gosh. So you've got some vodka in your glass, Carl. Yes. Um, I have another tool here. Uh, which you don't need for vodka, but this is this is an aerator. So you've seen me use the decanter. You know, you can pour your full bottle of wine into a crystal decanter um, to aerate the wine. If it's a big cab, this not so much the type of wine that you want to aerate, but you can if you want. Um, and so the idea is that if you have a you know a wine that needs time to open. The more the wine, you know, interacts with the air, it changes the flavor uh, of the wine. So it's really cool to actually sit through a full bottle and see how it changes from one glass to the last glass. Um, but if you don't want to wait around and you're in a hurry, uh, you know, this is called the Magic Decanter, which I got from Kenny the King up in Lakemore out there in the suburbs. Uh, and you just hold it up like this and you pour the wine through and into your glass. Oh. And it gives it um, just that air so that you can, you know, enjoy it. And it's, you know, rounds out the wine and helps to. We have a lot of tools to buy, Rev. Oh my oh. gosh, I have so many tools. I have one of these kind. Wow, that's a crystal aerator thing, right? Aerator, exactly. Okay, so you can do the same thing. Wow. But I also I have mean... one like you got. Wow. <sighs> You're impressive today. I but know. I have Brian. Questions. So as soon as I opened this earlier, you said, oh, "Open your wine," and then you said, "You go ahead and pour yourself a glass." Other people have told me that wine's supposed to sit after you, or I've read that. You, once you open it, you, you're not supposed to pour it right away. It's got to wait. Is that true? How do I know if it's got to wait? And is that what the aerators are for so you don't have to do that? Yeah. So, you know, like a wine like Max's Cab, you know, this is you know, under $20 a bottle. It's a great wine that can age too. So, um, but it's not going to be like your, you know, um, single vineyard, uh, you know, estate grown, big, you know, steak, lots of tannin, those kinds of wines need to open. They need a little time. Okay. Um, so I would say, you know, uh, it depends on the wine that you're drinking. Now, of course, I don't think it's bad to, to aerate a wine if, you know, if you just want to, you know, want to do that because you like to play with your new toy. Absolutely. Um, you know, you can. <laughs> I want to see what the difference is, too. Yeah. So, yeah. And then actually that's, you know, part of it too, actually in the directions I was reading them, um, you know, it just talks about, it enhances the aromas, the flavors, um, the finish of virtually every red wine. So, you know, you could get into the habit of doing that. It's just going to give it uh, some air and open it up. Yeah. It's got more flavor. It seems like. Yeah. Right. 
So, mm. speaking of everybody out there, do you have your wine? I love Jeff Anderson's comment. Like 2012 Grange, that you would want to decant and aerate because um, you do want to open some of these wines two hours ahead, an hour and a half ahead. Um, that much, huh? Mm-hmm. Yep. Sure. Yeah. So did someone go fishing? So actually, yeah. Um, Chaz over the weekend went fishing and caught a nice big, a big fish. Uh, did you have a picture of it? I don't know. I sent one to you. I'm pretty sure. Wow. Look at wow. that. You know what? I do like it. It's a small mouth, right? About a four pounder, I think. Um, it's a good looking fish. Yeah, nice. Where do you catch something like that there? Along the Kishwaukee River, of course, you know, Larson's Landing. So I was see, is there somewhere to go along the Kishwaukee that we could? Yeah, my brother's uh, got a canoe outfitting service. Uh, you can rent kayaks and tubes, too. Uh, it's called Canoe the Kish at Larson's Landing. And um, we're there, you know, as often as we can. Uh, and you can. Ah, Steve Larson says, hey, Carl, I need that shirt. What? Don't you, you know like mine? Steve? You know, Steve, funny you should ask about this shirt. Do you know where you can get it? This is very popular on Brian's show, The Reb Show, and you can yeah. get it at maroonfishingcompany.com. They outfit me with all my shirts. Brian down below over here, uh, he has one on, but he's usually in a suit for his show, and I just rotate these nice maroon fishing shirts. Um, they're not like those boxy uh, bait shop tees that itch when you're trying to buy the real cheap bait at the stores. These are yeah. a nice, soft cotton. They're breathable. They fit you well. They wash well. You can go to marooned fishingcompany.com and there's a whole bunch of shirts she has a sweatshirt on that comes this in is the color. softest thing ever i got it for mother's day um they also julie right yeah love that hat too so there's a theme here when you are with a larson you're either drinking wine eating food um delicious food uh making drinks fishing hunting something so there's something for everybody, but I went to the website and I bought a bunch of stuff. It's great. So yeah, good job, maroonfishingcompany.com. They they take care of us on the show at night. Yeah, you guys got to watch 10 o'clock tonight. Um, so let's talk a little bit about this wine. I'm sure everyone's getting thirsty. Oh, Jeffy Anderson, overbite air. Yep, you're <laughs> right. Overbite air out there in Rockford. Um, so we're drinking the Max's. Cab and my very first show that uh, we did the first week of the COVID lockdown, I featured um, the Bin 311 Penfolds Chardonnay. And so did the full history about the winery and you can go to penfolds.com to look at um, all that really cool stuff. But Max Schubert was the first, um, he was the winemaker that put uh, Grange, uh, he developed Grange and so this was an homage to Max Schubert. Um, he has passed since. And, um, but of course, um, you know, his memory lives on in this wine and it is a really great opulent um, cab and uh, really ripe end of the spectrum. So ready to drink now, but it has a lot of backbone. Um, so when you give it a the nose, you do get some, just a, a little bit of a hint of spearmint I get. What do you get, Bry? Spearmint, you said? Don't you get a little mint? I do. I think I need a little more in my glass. <laughs> hey, there's a question. What? All different kinds of shaped glasses. Does it matter what shape your glass is? I got one of these short ones. Does it matter what so kind for, of one? Yeah, for cabs, um, like this is a, a Bordeaux glass. The bigger the bowl, the better they say. And uh -oh. look at that bowl, right? Ooh. So get a whole bottle in there. You can actually get a whole <laughs> bottle in there. Um, but yeah, it just gives you know the bowl helps to uh, open the wine up. Also, it's great for the aroma. So when you stick, you know, you put your nose in there. I got mint. Yeah, now that you say that. Time and some black, black um, raspberry. 
dark berries I get. Yeah, I was so, going to say berry. Like a blackberry liqueur. Yeah. Let's see what else I think. Oh, yeah. Chaz says the Kish is a great river to fish, but not as good as the Delaware River. <laughs> ah, East Coasters. Um, but yes, and there's oak on this too. You get the oak on the nose. But ripe raspberry. Mm. Mm. Oh, definite oak, yeah. So good, right? It is very good. Um, black, black currant, um, plum, like just a you know, nice plum that when you take a bite and you kind of chew on the skin of a plum, that's what I'm getting. Like really juicy, you know, sweetness but tart with you know some backbone. Yeah, it's not too sweet. Which I no, like. no, I, no, no, I no, no. Like sweet. No, it has a really nice balance. Yeah. Um, but yeah, gorgeous fruits and a nice finish too. So what what are we eating out there? I know that uh, my brother's usually uh, putting together some dinner. Brian, did you prepare some food to eat with your? I I don't have much as far as fancy food in the house or <laughs> you know good food even. What I did have because everyone you know wine and cheese. I think of what the only cheese I had was cheese head string cheese. <laughs> so it's not, I'm sure, not the classiest for a nice well, like this, no. but it's going to have to do. I guess so. So you want to see what I have? I need Chaz to come over and cook something. <laughs> so Chaz got furloughed. He's really not happy about it um, oh. from, from Spirited Combos just for the next two episodes uh, so far. We'll see. Um, but tonight, I actually um, have uh, a Parpardelli ragu prepared by Stefano Cassati, who uh, is the owner of Cassati's Modern Italian Restaurant on Clark and Fullerton in Chicago. And uh, we partnered up today to do Penfold's family meal plan for out-of-work um, industry um, employees. And so this is mine. It is just wow. amazing. Look at that ragu. So it's a meat, you know, red meat sauce and um, salad with a vinaigrette. Everything is made fresh there. And Stefano is from Italy. He's, his recipes are amazing. The food is great. Um, so next week on the show, that was me uh, today picking up uh, this, this dinner. So um, next week, actually, Stefano is going to be a guest on the show, and we're going to also pair a meal uh, next week with Penfold's Max's Chardonnay. And so, you know, for those of you in Chicago, you can order takeout next week, Wednesday, and, uh, uh, you know, log on to the show at 7 p.m., and we can eat and drink together. Somebody's watching, Julie. Oh, Stefano! Cassati! Aww. Oh. It's delicious. I I couldn't wait to eat that par parpadelli. So thank you so much for preparing an amazing meal tonight. And I know I'm so excited to have you on the show next week. Uh, Stefano is a great guy, and um, his restaurant's beautiful. It used uh, it's been you know there for over two about two years now. Where is so it? Jill? It's at Clark and Fullerton, 444 West Fullerton. Um, so right there in Lincoln Park. And you were social uh, distancing with your mask. That's good. <laughs> yeah, I was. I'm trying, you know. It's uh you have to do what you have to do, right? Um, it looked delicious. <laughs> yeah, it looked amazing. So, so next week, you guys order from Casati's and you know, go through all this stuff with me. It looks a lot better than Brian's sure makes the hotter it is. Mm, yep, it does totally. Oh, now I'm hungry. So, I know, right? I was, um, I was trying to think of some other fun tools that we could talk about today. And <laughs> I am not great. I am Italian. Ah, oh, so Roman, right? You know. Cheers. <laughs> oh. And Gina says, "Best food, and it travels well, like you're actually there." Oh. So. I would love to uh, go to Italy as soon as we, you know, are able. And uh, Stefano, you can set me up with your family out there. Cheers. 
<laughs> you only know, notice about Penfolds, Julie, while while I was at the store, they kind of have a wine for every price range. Yeah. This was <laughs> this was only twenty bucks, but then there was like a sixty dollar wine next to it. Nice. There's got Carl's. Carl's got the Penfolds. That's great. Got you all hooked. I love that Chardonnay. That's happening next week. Yeah. Yeah. This happened last week. <laughs> <laughs> my wife liked it. my wife liked it so much. She put the Christmas lights in there and she lights it up. Oh, <laughs> that's so cool. Unfortunately, I don't know how to turn it on. <laughs> There's got yeah, got to push a button. It does have that classy label, you know. It's yeah. the kind of bottle you do want to save. It's nice. Yes. And you're right. There is a huge price range. So you can find, you know, Max's is the, you know, $20 bottle all the way up to uh, Grange, which is about $1,000 a bottle. Julie, you got a question coming in here. Mike and Freddie want to know if Cassati's travels well to Michigan. <laughs> I mean, we can try it, right? Actually, I mean, he's listening. So what do you think? <laughs> yeah, Stefano, what about it? Can you know you what? In Michigan? <laughs> you could eat it on the way there. <sighs> there you go. I would need multiple entrees, though. It's about a four and a half hour drive to my brother's. So oh. um, appetizers, salad, soup. Take your time. Keep I to Italian and dinners. And they last about four hours. Right? Unofficially <laughs> drive with your knees. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Michigan. Or drive with your knees. Make her, make her drive while you eat. Yeah. Good point. Good well, you point. got a lot of people tuning in today. I like it. When in Rome, nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. I like that attitude, Stefano. I do like that attitude. You know what is the worst when you can't, um, you know, you, you, you're, you don't remember where you put your glass or you're at a table with a bunch of people and you lose your glass? Uh, does that ever happen to you guys? Do you have more All tools for this? I have so many funny little things I found. When Julie um, comes, she comes with a toolbox to the party. <laughs> you know, like these little things that you put on, the rings that you put on. Yes, I've seen you those. Can choose your color. And I forgot they're in the kitchen. I totally forgot. But if you just hold on one second, I have to go get this. Hilarious. Okay, so talk amongst yourselves. Sure. So, Brian, how's the wine? The, the wine's good, Carl. It, it, it's it's really nice. It's very good for and you know twenty dollars isn't that expensive for wine. You know, you know I, I sometimes buy the five dollar wine. That's why this is. Uh, but, she can you five dollar really wine. Oh. No, but it's not good. This is really good. I'm but, telling uh, you. She's oh wait, back. Little, Hang on. There she is. <laughs> I was gonna say we used to just use sharpies on our plastic. Oh, cup. look at that little guy. Hang on, Julie. Go ahead. There you go. Stan. He's got a name. His name is Ryan. Oh, Ryan. <laughs> Hi, um, Ryan. <laughs> he is totally buff. And he just hangs on your he just hangs on your glass. <laughs> Does Ryan have a sister? Ryan has a bunch of buddies. Okay. <laughs> and uh, so there's like Ryan and Bob and Steven and I'm not sure me Carl. and Carl can show up at a party with our Ryan and Bob and Steven <laughs> jewelry for our wine glasses. Oh. Is there like well, a what? If there are no sisters, then that is an idea. Someone should really get on that. And you know what? You can take your Nick and Bella bracelets and turn them around and slide them down the stem of the oh, wine glass. This is very true. This Absolutely. Where I should be holding it, right? It should be, yes. You want to hold it at the base because you don't want to change the temperature of the wine unless it's too cold. And then by holding it like this. Is that why people do that? Yeah, if it's warm too up, cold, you mine. warm it up in your hand like this and, uh, you know, give it a swirl. Oh. And that also helps to open it up a little right. more. When wine is too cold, you don't get all the flavors and characteristics. It's better to be served at, you know, uh, well, for reds, just a little bit below. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm a little distracted in the background. I've got um, a couple more of these guys. <laughs> They're really hard to not look at. Are they wrestling? <laughs> Gina, Gina said that would be the most man action I've got. Well, <laughs> I mean, now we know. <laughs> Tune in tonight, Gina, 10 p.m. Oh. Central Time at the yeah. Red. We'll take care of that. 
definitely tune in to Rev Schnorr tonight. Put the kids um, to bed first. That's all we could say. I've had such a blast with you guys um, tonight, and I, I want to thank you so much for being on the show. Um, it's been fun. Yeah, it thank you has for been fun. And you know uh, what? You've, you've taught me a lot because – Brian has tried to teach me, and I was pretty much clueless until a couple weeks ago. About four, what? About four weeks ago, I wouldn't know. I would just stay quiet at the restaurant and let someone else order and just go with the flow. But now I could throw some input in. Now you have some skills, Carl. Yes, got I got skills you. and I have tools. You have tools, absolutely. What more does a man need but skills and tools? Ah, right. A good wine. Did good I wine. see Maggie Garrity on here somewhere? I think I did. Well, hello to everybody who joined today. Guess what? Um, next week, we have a great show. We're going to have Stefano on. So definitely pre-order your takeout meal. Um, watch the Rev Schnorr show tonight at 10 p.m. Don't forget. It's hilarious. I'll be there um, because I'm not drinking vodka tonight. So I'll be able to make it up past 9 p.m. Um, <laughs> Don't forget to hit your share button for Thank Spirited you. Convos. This is the only way it works. We both, Brian and I, have a background in obviously this new world of TV, and uh, it replays, right, Julie? So it stays yeah. up there. So all it takes is forever's watching. Hit that share button, and it kind of, it kind of spreads like the COVID, but in a good way. <laughs> right. So, like, if you're you gonna, have, your friend says, "Hey, I'm gonna have a party. What kind of wine should I get?" Say, "Oh, Julie just talked about this wine. Send them to Spirited Convos YouTube or Facebook page." To the to the date that she talked about the wine, and you get the whole episode right there for your friend. Share it with them, That's and right. they can learn about and, it too. And you can watch it on the way up to Michigan or Wisconsin when you get to go. That's right. That's right. Yep. On While your... doing, as we say on the Reverend Show, take it away. I'm gonna head out. We'll see you soon. Bye, Thanks, Julie. Carl. Thank you All for right, having yeah. me. We'll see you. Uh, see you tonight at ten. To my uh, fans out there, thanks everybody for joining. Every week, I'm just always so uh, I'm so glad to see you all. It's so much fun. We've got a lot of really cool stuff coming up as we are. Um, hopefully, uh, these restaurants are doing more takeout, and um, hopefully, you know, in the next upcoming months, we have a lot more fun to be had, um, even from your living room. So, love you all. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week. Ciao.